I feel like I've always been an overwhelmingly positive person. I was like that as a kid, but as an adult, I've adapted it as a philosophy. Whether it's been jail, drugs, car crashes, father dying, positive mental attitude has got me through everything. You gotta choose to feel great. You gotta choose to smile. You gotta choose to be positive. I carried that attitude through pretty much everything. I was known for being a big crybaby as a kid. Just any, any little nick or scratch or cut, I just, you know, I could not take it. I wouldn't even put a worm on a hook when we were fishing as a kid. I did not do well handling pain. But something about getting tattooed, just expressing yourself in a, in a different way or made it worth the pain. The more I got into tattooing, the more I found that I loved about it. It just slowly became everything I wanted to do with my life. Growing up in Fort Worth, I feel like it's the perfect place for me. It was, uh, we lived in a little suburban neighborhood. I could skateboard to school. It was a big enough city that you had what you needed. Everybody's super friendly. Fort Worth's just this like super clean town. When Oliver was very young, he liked to, liked to draw. When he was supposed to be doing his homework, he was drawing pictures. He was ADHD except when he was drawing. When Oliver was a teenager, he was a skater. I was the kid on the bike, on the BMX bike or the kid on the skateboard. Definitely my no first thing that I was ever passionate about in my life. We met at the, at the high school. It was like a weird high school sign-up thing where you got to walk around the cafeteria and pick the classes that you wanted. He was one of the only guys that had skated. Just seeing that skateboard, that's all it took. The football players did not like him because the girls did like him. He'd be gossiping with these girls in class and the jock dude would get a hold, you know, catch wind of it. And uh, next thing you know, you know, we'd be skating around Friday night or something and these jocks are driving by and throwing beer bottles at us while we're skating down the road in front of the high school. Walking into school the next day with a black eye was like a badge of honor. You know, like, I'm still here. You know, that, that whole kind of like punk rock attitude that you can't, you can't break me, you know, whatever. And uh, I think that has a lot to do with me building, building the character and staying true to who I am. When Oliver started tattooing, I just figured it was something gonna be a flash in the pan. I, di I didn't think it was gonna last that long. Well, I had started tattooing and I had started doing some tattoos on some friends and I'd set up a little makeshift shop in a friend of mine's basement in Fort Worth for a little while. And, I was into a lot of partying, a lot of drugs, and uh, I ended up going to jail. And I got out of jail and got a job at a conveyor belt factory and was still like kind of tattooing on some friends a little bit. Then I, somebody gave me a tattoo magazine and it just blew me away. Like the things that could be done with tattooing I had no clue about. And I was like, man, this is, there's people that do this for a job. And I was like, that's what I, that's what I gotta do. And then a guy named Richard Stell moved to Dallas, opened Paradise Tattoo, and I just like met him, started hanging out at Paradise literally seven days a week. When he first came to shop, he was, you know, he was really young, so he was already tattooing, you know, and he was, and I liked it because he was kind of doing it the same way I did. You do this long enough, you can see somebody that all they need is a push in the right direction. And I uh, just started soaking it up, trying to learn as much as I could, and one day Richard was just like, pretty bluntly was just like, you want to learn how to tattoo? And I was like, yes. He was hanging out and hanging out and hanging out and some shit. You know, it, if you're gonna be hanging out here all the time, you might as well just come work here. Come work here, forget everything you know, start from scratch, we'll teach you how to tattoo. And that's what happened. And this, this opportunity arose to open Elm Street Tattoo with, with my partner, Dean Williams. Here we are 20 years later, 25 years later, He's still tattooing and doing very well and famous for it, you might say. This is a Mother's Day present from Oliver in the year 2001. He had tried to give me a tattoo every year for my birthday, and I always refused. And after I turned 50, he gave me this tattoo in a beautiful frame. 
I'm very proud of it. The Dallas-Fort Worth area is kind of like one big metropolis. They call it the DFW Metroplex, and it's just, it's kind of all one thing, and I love it. I mean, this is my favorite city on earth, and I'm pretty sure that I'm never leaving. I've known Oliver since, I'd say, 1991, early 92. When he's in Dallas and I'm in Dallas, we try to eat lunch together every day. But or whatever I, bike I'm riding, he'll buy it. He'll I'll, ride a I'll bike ride the one that matches core, it. Right, yeah, but like, it's, like, old, it's the same year. Like if we, we'll do the same year, or sometimes we'll do our birth year. So I'll ride my 65, he'll ride a 71. Sometimes he'll, if he rides his chopper, then I ride my one bike that's kind of a chopper. And we'll start the discussion at the gate and in the end, we'll end up going where Oliver wants, except for Antone's. We are not going to eat lunch at Antone's today. I mean, I definitely, like having a favorite motorcycle is like having a favorite Beatles song. Like every couple of months, it might change, you know, depending on what's going on. I do have something about the human spirit, like connects you to the universe in a way that you relate to your own terms. And so the motorcycle that I have that was a 1971 motorcycle, it's the same year I was born. Something about riding that motorcycle. We're on this planet together for 44 years and you're cruising down the highway and it's this old rickety motorcycle that you know could explode in any second. It's just the best feeling on earth. Well, this is Deep Bell and this is my neighborhood. I've been here in one way or another for almost 30 years, I guess. Well, this is Three Links. This is our local hangout. This is our main bar. This is where I send all our friends kick it the most. The Twilight Lounge this is where me and my buddy Josh Hammer Times host karaoke every Thursday night. Best karaoke in the world, as stated in numerous publications. He's a big stickler on if you have a place in the community and, and, and you can, uh, and you have a gift, then use that gift and it'll be worth it. He takes care of the people that are in his community um, that, that work for him. When I moved back to town, I looked for Oliver and finally got a hold of him. After hanging out two or three times, he's like, man, you gotta come work at Elm Street. So yeah, I mean, I'll show up, I'll work there. And Oliver's a real loyal person. He uh, never forget a friend, never forget a customer. You got a question, you got a problem, drop what he has going on, which is like a trillion things at a time. All right, here we are at Anchor Screen Printing, a uh, t-shirt printing shop that started in 1999. It's all small, batch, done by hand printing. It's all just the old school way of hand squeegeeing the ink. And it's definitely uh, something you have to love to do. Um, it's not something, this, this would not stay in business if it wasn't something that I loved. In typical anchor screen printing fashion, we're printing shirts for the event the day before the event. That way they're hot off the press. So this is the, the very simple design for the uh, Elm Street Music and Tattoo Fest 2016. This festival is incredibly important to Oliver, not just because he wants to have a festival. He wanted to create an environment where he can bring all of his friends that he loves and appreciates to one kind of huge party. 20 years ago, when I first went to tattoo conventions with Richard, it was a small, tighter knit deal. Everybody that was there, everyone knew each other. And I was like, man, we need to have a tattoo event that's more like that. And so we, you know, started putting this idea together to just start it out small and have 40 tattooers. That way, all 40 tattooers will be slammed. Everyone around him, he wants them to succeed. So he loves creating environments where everybody can progress. And this is just another one of those, like, massive events that hopefully we can really push forward and make it happen for everybody. The way I think about tattooing in general is that, you know, it's my preferred medium of art. That's where I feel the most comfortable practicing art. There was no other medium that had that aesthetic. I can't imagine not tattooing. I mean, I go on vacation and I take my tattoo gear with me and tattoo at night. I mean, it's definitely something that takes a toll on your body. I guess my only plan is to tattoo as long as, as my hands can hold up. Hey, this is Oliver Peck. Be sure to subscribe to Spike's YouTube for more Ink Master videos.